an academy. Let's crack it. I have been teaching from past 10 years now and along all these years I have solved thousands of questions from different reputed books. R.C. Mukherjee, N. Avasthi, M.S. Johan, Thingage, J.D. Lee, you name it, I've done it. I've also been solving various modules from different reputed organizations. All this so that I'm able to give you all you need for your need preparation, at least when it comes to chemistry. Now, does that mean you have to solve the same amount of questions too? Definitely not. You don't have years to spare, my dear students. So what else can you do to assure that you will definitely be able to solve questions in your NEET examination? I know that one of the biggest fears students is the fear of putting all the efforts in studying and syllabus completion, but still not being able to solve questions in the paper. This is how you fix it. I'll give you an overall overview of how to become a master at problem solving and also a step up by step guide on how to approach problems individually. Step one. Understand the concepts and memorize all the related formulas. There are no questions to solve without the concept, my dear students. If you don't put an effort in memorizing the formulas, you are doomed. You should always, always try to write all the formulas you studied in one chapter at the end of your notes. It's a simple practice, but it will take you a long way. When the formulas are at one place, it gets easier to memorize and recall them. Step 2. Take it slow. Once you know you have completed, you have completely grasped all the concepts and formulas, start solving problems. Always start with the basic ones. The more problems you solve, the more confidence you develop in yourself. It builds a momentum which keeps you going through the more complex and the difficult problems. Also, my dear students, Make sure that the questions you are solving are relevant. Don't just pick the questions haphazardly from anywhere. Have a single source of questions and focus on them completely. You need to have a systematic and strategic approach, dear students. Step 3. Read the problem. When you start solving a particular question, the first thing you do is always read the statement carefully and identify the given information. Highlight the key variables constants and the units mentioned in the problem. Step 4. Identify the relevant concept. Relate the problem to the appropriate concept or formula from your syllabus. Make sure you understand the underlying theory before attempting to solve the numerical. Step 5. Approach. The best way to make sure you can solve a variety of questions is to focus on the approach of solving the questions. Instead of trying to solve every question differently. While solving problems, you'll always notice that a lot of questions are actually solved through identical methods. Group your questions accordingly, so you have one standard approach for a group of questions. Step 6. Perform calculations. Now that you know what to do, organize the given data and your known quantities. Use the appropriate formulas and equations to calculate the result. I can't emphasize enough how important strong calculations is. I have seen students mess up their entire exams just because their basic concepts of maths were never clear. Please and please make sure before jumping into the problem solving, you go revise the basic mathematics again. Fractions, squares, cubes, log, trigonometry, all are very important for solving questions in physics as well as chemistry. Step 7. From here, only these scenarios are possible. Scenario number 1. You will either solve the questions correctly or you won't be able to solve it at all or might get a wrong answer after trying to solve it. In case of number 1, verify that the units of the final answer are correct and consistent with the given units in both the question and your options. Lot of times, the examiner, they mess up with your head through units and most students actually fall for it. If you could not solve the question, however, you can check the solution at this point and see where you were lagging. Understand why you could not solve it on your own. Was your approach wrong completely? Or was your calculations wrong? Was it because you did not understand what the question was asking? You can only solve a problem if you exactly know what the problem is. Step 8. Practice and time management. 
Regular practice is the key to master numerical problems. The more you move a muscle, the stronger it gets. Test yourself. Solve regular mock test papers and allocate a specific amount of time for each problem during practice sessions. Remember that NEET is only a test of your intelligence, but also a test of how well you can manage your time. Keep a record of your progress. You might notice that you are able to solve one question in 10 minutes in the beginning. But as you gradually progress, the time taken to solve one question decreases. Talking about the conclusions. Summarize the key points of the strategy outlined in the script. Reiterate the importance of the practice, perseverance, and a systematic approach of solving neat numericals effectively. Remember that consistent practice, a clear understanding of concepts, and a patient approach are essential for improving your problem solving skills in preparation for NEET or any other competitive examination. Unacademy. Let's crack it.